Good day. Today, we will be discussing topics in biotechnology. And this um, slide presentation is from the ninth edition of Campbell Biology. Okay, so for an overview of our lesson for the fourth quarter, we'll be starting up, off with um, genetic recombination and basic techniques used in molecular biology. After that, we will be discussing photosynthesis and cell respiration as part of our discussion in of um, cell energetics. Okay, so the sequencing of genomes of more than 7,000 species was underway in 2010. So more than a de decade after, of course, we've seen a lot of developments in the study of um, the genome of a number of species. So DNA sequencing has depended on advances in technology, starting with making what we call the recombinant DNA. So in recombinant DNA, nucleotide sequences from two different sources, often two species, are combined in vitro into the same DNA molecule. So we will um, look at um, the process later on. Methods for making recombinant DNA are central to what we call genetic engineering or the direct manipulation of genes for practical purposes. So later on, we'll try to um, enumerate some examples and I think these are also stipulated in your learning guides. Okay, so DNA technology has revolutionized biotechnology, the, man the manipulation of organisms or their genetic components to make useful products. Okay, so let's start with genetic recombination. So when you talk about genetic recombination, it is something that contributes to diversity. Okay, how so? Because in this process, we are combining the DNA um, from two different sources. So, so we'll try to look at the process in greater detail later on. So prokaryotic DNA from different individuals can be brought together by what we call, uh, by different processes, namely transformation, transduction, and conjugation. So we'll try to <clears throat> um, look at these processes in greater detail. Movement of genes among individuals from different species is what we call horizontal gene transfer. So essentially, um, we are trying to mediate no, um, horizontal gene transfer via different processes. And um, in this chapter, we'll try to enumerate some of these important processes that contribute to horizontal gene transfer. Okay, let's start with transformation and transduction. So a prokaryotic cell can take up and incorporate foreign DNA from the surrounding environment in the process called transformation. So I think this might be a familiar term because we discussed this when we had our lecture on the elucidation of the genetic material, the transforming principle. Okay, so the difference of transformation and transduction would be on the process on how the genes are transferred. Transduction is the movement of genes between bacteria via bacteriophages or viruses that infect bacteria. So essentially, these bacteriophages would act as vectors, okay, that would um, be responsible for the movement of genes. Okay? To better visualize, this is transformation. So transformation may happen, um, you, uh, may, may, may occur okay? with um, DNA fragments and with the use of a plasmid. Okay? So there is uptake of DNA. Okay? And not because there is uptake, uptake of DNA, there is stable transformation. Hindi palaging ganon. Okay? There are times that um, the foreign DNA will not be integrated in um, the genome of the, of the bacterial cell or it will not be um, imbibed inside. It will um, undergo degradation so there would be unsuc unsuccessful transformation. So later on, we'll try to um, discuss how to look at... Um, successful um, entry of 
different foreign um, genes in our um, bacterial cells. Okay, so this is transformation, the uptake of DNA from the external environment. Okay, we talk about transduction, it's not uh, a simple uptake of the genetic material. There is a um, bacterial phage or, or a virus that infects a, a bacteria that would um, act as a messenger of this phage DNA that will be, of course, um, transported or be infected inside the donor bacterial cell. After that, the phage DNA and proteins are made. So um, there is assembly of um, the materials that would be needed for the replication of the virus. Okay? So occasionally during phage assembly, okay, since the bacterial chromosome is broken into pieces, there are times that um, pieces of the bacterial DNA are packaged in the phage capsid. So, nasasama siya doon sa na-assemble na um, viruses. Okay? Then, the donor cell would lyse, meaning uh, um, it would break open, as illustrated here, and would release the phage DNA, or the phage particles rather, containing the bacterial DNA. So, um, these newly formed or uh, newly assembled uh, viral particles okay, can carry the bacterial DNA. Okay, from this step. Okay, any phage carrying the bacterial DNA can infect a new host cell. This will now be the recipient cell. Okay, so the recipient cell may um, may accept no the the, the DNA inser inserted to to it, and recombination can occur, producing a recombinant cell with a genotype different from both the donor. In here, donor and the recipient cell. So essentially, there is um, combination no, of uh, the sequences. That's why we call it recombination. Okay. So this is transduction. So this also this is also the image from your <clears throat> Campbell biology book. Okay, as discussed a while ago. So, as you can see, it's a donor cell. And because of the life cycle of a virus, during phage assembly, pwede niyang maimbibe yung um, DNA ng, ng donor cell, then of course, recombine with um, the genome of a recipient cell, forming a recombinant cell. Okay. Conjugation, on the other hand, is the process where genetic material is transferred between prokaryotic cell. So it's not between the bacteria and the environment or the bacteria and a virus. There is transfer of genetic material between two prokaryotic cells. Okay? So a donor cell attaches to a recipient cell via a sex pilus or pilus, okay? pulls it closer, and then transfers the DNA. To better visualize, ayan siya. Okay, so we will not be discussing um, the processes in between, but what's, what's important to, to know is that when there is exchange between two prokaryotic cells via a sex pilus, it's what we call conjugation. Okay? So we will not be discussing this anymore. The F factor as a plasmid. I think I can give this as an additional reading for you. I think this is um, discussed thoroughly in your textbook, in our textbook or reference material. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so basically we discussed the basics of natural um, genetic recombination. Let's now move on to the, co the concept of DNA cloning. To work directly with specific genes, scientists prepare well-defined segments of DNA in identical copies. So essentially, para kang nagsa-serox, para kang nagpo-photocopy. And we call that process DNA cloning. Okay? So let's have a preview of DNA cloning and its applications. So most methods for DNA um, cloning 
in the laboratory share general features such as the use of bacteria and their plasmids. Okay? So, kayo na pa natin binabanggit si plasmid. Plasmids are small circular DNA molecules that replicate separately from the bacterial chromosome. Okay? And clone genes are useful for making copies of a particular gene and producing a protein product. So, notice class that um, most of our um, studied um, models no, would use bacteria. Bakit kaya? Because of their very short lifespan. So, essentially, class, madali silang mag-replicate. Therefore, if you want a product to be easily cloned or, or, or produced, we use bacteria because of their um, short life cycle. Okay? So, gene cloning involves using bacteria to make multiple copies of a gene. Okay? So, essentially, if a foreign DNA is inserted into a plasmid, this foreign DNA would code for um, our desired phenotype or our desired, desired product. Okay? And the recombinant plasmid is inserted into a bacterial cell. So, the bacterial cell would now undergo reproduction resulting in the cloning of the plasmid including the foreign DNA because the plasmid would carry the foreign DNA. Now, this results in the production of multiple copies of a single gene. To better visualize, ayan siya. Okay, let's um, try to dig deeper in, uh, for this example. So, for example, we have a plasmid in here. Okay, and we, we, we want um, a characteristic, okay, from another cell, okay, of course, we should have um, identified first the gene of interest to be inserted into the plasmid, okay? Once the plasmid is designed, okay, in a way that the gene of interest is, um, is present in its entirety, the plasmid will now be ready to be imbibed by the bacterial cell. Okay? To produce, of course, what we call the recombinant bacterium. Better visualize. Ayan siya. Ayan to. So, notice that the foreign DNA from another cell containing the gene of interest is inserted to the plasmid. And the plasmid would now enter the bacterial cell. The host cell, a host cell grown in culture, Host cell is now then grown in culture to form a clone of cells containing the cloned gene of interest. So essentially, pinaparami natin itong gene of interest natin. Okay, so that during gene expression, okay, the protein or the protein product that we intend to clone is now expressed. Okay, so yun yung, yun yung nangyayari during gene cloning. Okay? Essentially, what happens is that pwede siyang mag-split into two um, parang researches. Eh, to either you get the copies um, of the clone gene, insert it to, um, to other organisms. It can be that the gene uh, pwede siyang um, insert sa ibang desired organism. Okay, so for example, kayo na develop yung gene for pest resistance, pwede ma-insert sa plants, pwede ka rin namang mag-insert ng gene that will be used to alter bacteria for cleaning up toxic waste. So essentially, um, basic research on genes. Pwede rin naman siyang basic research on proteins once the proteins are, uh, are produced or, or the genes are expressed. Okay, so, pwede yung protein products that would dissolve blood clots in heart, heart attack therapy. Okay? And of course, um, growth hormones. Okay? So, pwede yung gene mismo, yung DNA, gene of interest, or yung product ng ating gene of interest, yung paramihin natin. So, essentially, that's DNA cloning or the concept behind cloning. Okay? And in our learning guides, we um, we are to discuss no um, the formation of recombinant DNA via the use of restriction enzymes. So this is a brief discussion of um, the use of recombinant uh, reco um, 
of recombinant DNA in many, many fields, no? Okay, so let's start. So bacterial restriction enzymes are the enzymes that would, re would be responsible for cutting DNA molecules at specific sites. So essentially, these, enzyme, these enzymes or the restriction enzymes would look for certain sequences okay, na doon niya ikakut, no? it would make a certain cut in the DNA. And that place where it makes the cut is what we call the restriction sites. So a restriction enzyme usually makes many cuts, yielding what we call restriction fragments. Okay? And the most useful um, restriction enzyme would cut DNA in a staggered way, producing uh, what we call sticky ends. Okay. So in this um, um, picture, in this slide, notice that the first two would have restriction sites na ganito. Na hindi siya diretso, para siyang, ah, kailangan mag-cut dito pa sa gitna. So parang malayo yung point na ito dito. So once they, they are separated, may part na single-stranded, may part na single-stranded. And these single-stranded parts would now form what we call the sticky ends because they are now capable of forming hydrogen bonds with other single-stranded portions of the DNA. So later on, we discuss natin yung importance nito. Some, would, some restriction enzymes would form what we call blunt ends because, as you can see, hindi naman sila nagproduce ng single strand doon sa kanilang um, restriction sites. Okay, so these two would now, itong first two would form sticky ends. This, the last one, would not. Sticky ends can bond with complementary sticky ends of other fragments. Therefore, it is now possible for us to insert something or insert another sticky end so that there will be formation of hydrogen bonds. Okay? Of course, um, we are talking about the gene of interest. Okay? So if our gene of interest would ha also have sticky ends, so pwede siyang kumabit talaga dun sa ating plasmids. Okay? To cap it off, we have the DNA ligase, which is the enzymes um, that would seal the bonds between restriction fragments. So essentially, para kang pinagdikit mo sila, nagdugtong mo sila, pero because of DNA ligase, as we discussed in um, the central dogma of molecular biology, it would now seal the nicks no? in our double-stranded DNA. Okay? So, for example, we have a DNA sequence in here. What if we have a restriction site that would cut in here and cut in here, also in between, forming what we call sticky ends. So, this is a sticky end. Okay, so, para siyang meron kang um, single-stranded na portion that is capable of forming hydrogen bonds with other sticky ends. So, the DNA fragment added from another molecule cut by the same enzyme. Oh, so why is it why is it important for it no na yung DNA fragment na i-add natin for example tong gray na part would be cut by the same enzyme. Bakit kaya? It's it's important class because since it was cut by the same enzyme, meaning etong parte na ito parte na ito can now be spare complementarily. So that the sticky ends of this one and the sticky ends of this one could now join. So as true with this one, the sticky end of this one and of this one. Okay? Therefore, um, forming a recombinant DNA molecule once the ligase would seal the strands together. Okay? So in gene cloning, the original plasmid is what we call the cloning vector. So siya yung tagapagdala, no? So, a cloning vector is the DNA molecule that can carry foreign DNA into a host cell. Of course, um, it can replicate there also via the, uh, uh, via the um, replication machinery of um, the one that would accept it. So, let's have an example. So, what exactly are the steps required to clone the hummingbird beta globin gene in a bacterial pl plasmid? So, okay. So here are some some assumptions. Okay, 
So the um, hummingbird genomic DNA and bacterial plasmids are isolated. They are both caught with the same restriction enzyme and the fragments are then mixed. Okay, so that the um, gene of interest can now um, stick with the plasmid. Okay, they are mixed and then DNA ligase would be added okay, to seal the mix between the sticky ends. To better visualize, ayan siya. So this is um, a representation, a simple representation of DNA cloning. Okay. So, isa isahin natin yan. First up, we have a plasmid. So, exa uh, what exactly are the parts, the important parts of a plasmid? First and foremost, it should have an origin of replication. Sorry, it's not illustrated here. Why? Because that's the important, that's an important site because the thing we are doing here is cloning. So, if we don't have an origin of replication, then the gene will not be cloned. Okay? So, what else? So, it must have a gene that would code for ampicillin resistance or antibiotic resistance so that uh, when we grow it in culture, even in the presence of an antibiotic, uh, uh, we are sure that the DNA of interest would um, still be recombined with our plasmid. Also, you have a restriction site, which is... Um, flanked inside what we call the LAC-Z gene. Okay, so the LAC-Z gene would be responsible for the production of beta-galactosidase as discussed in our, our lesson in operons. Or later on, we'll be discussing the importance of the LAC-Z gene. So, notice class that the restriction site, the important restriction site is that it is inside the LAC-Z gene. Okay, now, um, we'll be using a restriction enzyme that would cut in our restriction site for the bacterial plasmid and a restriction enzyme that would cut okay, um, our gene of interest. So, you, have, you see there are sticky ends. So, these are the hummingbird DNA fragments. Okay, so when we mix them in solution, we can form either recombinant plasmids or non-recombinant plasmids. Okay, so notice class that um, these are recombinant plasmids because as you can see, since nakat siya dun sa ating uh, restriction site, and of course, since it was cut in here producing a sticky end, the hummingbird DNA fragments, but not necessarily the, the gene of interest, would now be inserted inside or flanked inside the LAC-Z gene, therefore destroying or, 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 or disrupting the sequence of the LAC-Z gene. So since it is disrupted, the recombinant plasmids cannot produce the product for LAC-Z or cannot produce beta-galactosidase. So later on, we'll discuss that. But if we have a non-recombinant plasmids, meaning the gene of interest is not inserted in the restriction site where it should be cut and pasted, Okay. Walang nangyaring um, recombination, so we call it a non-recombinant plasmid. Okay. So the next step, since we, we, we are already assuming that there is recombination, is of course screening for those um, bacterial cells that would have recombinant plasmids. Okay. We will now insert these plasmids to uh, inside, of course, the um, our bacteria, and of course we'll look at um, which um, bacterial, um, bacterial colony would carry the recombinant plasmid. Okay? So, if... Ang titignan natin dito, class, na-insert nga ba siya doon sa LAC-Z gene? Okay? So, in our um, screening process, we call this the classic no, um, blue and white screening. So, please read on this. Okay, so if the colony would carry a non-recombinant plasmid with a with a, with the intact LAC-Z gene, meaning it has produced the beta-galactosidase gene, the beta-galactosidase gene would be responsible for the formation of a blue color. So itong blue colors na ito, ibig sabihin, meron kang non-recombinant plasmid kasi buo yung LAC-Z gene mo, hindi siya na-disrupt. Okay, now, how do we know if um, the colonies would now have or would now carry the recombinant plasmid. Okay? We can say that if 
there is um, disruption in the LAC-Z gene. Why? Because if the LAC-Z gene is disrupted, in this case, inserted with um, gene from the hummingbird, it would produce a white colony. Because hindi nga siya makakapag-produce ng, ng beta-galactosidase that would be responsible for the production of the blue color. Therefore, we are aiming for these white colonies. Okay, so that is exactly how we screen for um, this bacterial colony that would carry the recombinant plasmid. Okay, so ayan. So we want our colonies to be white. Okay, since we have the foreign DNA inserted within the LAC-Z. Okay, so notice pwede naman pala siyang ma-insert outside of LAC-Z, but then again, we cannot discern it from those colonies that would no insert at all. So, pareha sila mag-form ng blue colonies because their um, LAC-Z genes are intact. So, we want this one. Those that would um, produce white colonies. Okay? So, this is basics of, the rec of recombinant DNA technology. Let's now go to other relevant technologies for DNA science. Let's start with the polymerase chain reaction or the PCR. Okay? So, this reaction can produce many copies of a specific target, tar target segment of DNA and it is a three-step cycle, heating, cooling, and then replication, which brings about a chain reaction that produces an exponen exponentially growing population of identical DNA molecules. And of course, the key to polymerase chain reaction, so notice class that there is heating, there is cooling, there is replication, there is changes in temp there are changes rather in temperature. So the key in here is that we have a polymerase enzyme that is heat stable. That's why what we used, use rather in polymerase chain reaction is what we call the TAC polymerase. Also, this polymerase enzyme is isolated from Thermus aquaticus and TAQ, diba? Thermus aquaticus, which is a thermophile. Okay, so, um, kaya niyang ma, ma withstand, no? Yung changes in the temperature. So, it is heat stable. So that even if we change the temperature high or low, it, it still can process, no? As it is. Okay? <clears throat> so, Notice class that there, um, every cycle of um, PCR or the polymerase chain reaction um, would have three steps. We have the naturation, annealing, and extension. So we'll try to discuss um, them one by one. Okay. So essentially, sa PCR class, it's not, it's the same with DNA replication in a sense na you're replicating DNA. But in PCR, you have a target sequence only. You, you, we don't need to replicate the whole genomic DNA. We are only after a target sequence. Okay? <clears throat> so since we only have a target sequence that we, we want to replicate or clone, okay, it's essential for us to identify its sequence. Okay, so later on, discuss natin yan. The first step is, of course, the naturation. So we need to separate them into single-stranded DNA molecules. Now, we have annealing. What happens in annealing is that we have primers. These primers would be um, responsible for um, identifying no, the sequence that will be replicated during PCR. So these primers, oh, you are. Um, uh, I think a lot of you would, would know that these primers are designed, of course, to replicate only a certain portion of the DNA. O, dahil sa mga primers na yan, okay, hindi na replicate yung buong DNA. There are only sequences of, um, from the genome that um, are replicated during PCR. So, after annealing, there is extension. So, dito na papasok yung 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 <clears throat> yung function ni TAC polymerase TAC polymerase and the addition of new nucleotides to produce this um, sequence of interest. So that's cycle one. That would yield two molecules. 
these two molecules will now undergo another cycle of denaturation, annealing, and extension, therefore producing four molecules. Notice class na dito sa part na ito, hindi na na-produce yung buong genome because of na, um, you designing your own primers. So, after cycle 2, you produce 4 molecules. After cycle 3, you produce 8 molecules. Okay? So, notice class, no, itong mga naka-white naka box, ito yung target sequence natin. So, unti-unting nawawala yung portions where um, you have your sequences na hindi naman pala target, no? Na hindi naman pala target. So, essentially, PCR is like targeted DNA replication. So, you only want to replicate your target or desired sequence. <clears throat> also, we have uh, other techniques used in DNA technology okay, that would allow us to study the sequence, expression, and function of a gene. So, a while ago, we discussed DNA cloning. Ayan. DNA cloning would allow researchers to compare genes and alleles between individuals locate the gene expression in the body, and determine the role of a gene in an organism. And several techniques are used to analyze the DNA of genes. Okay, so a while ago, we discussed PCR. In this case, we are now talking about expression. Okay, and one of the most important techniques discussed in, that should be discussed in molecular biology and basic biochemistry would be gel electrophoresis and the idea of southern blotting. So one indirect method of rapidly analyzing and comparing genomes is gel electrophoresis. So eh, this um, technique would use, uh, use a gel as a molecular sieve. So essentially, parang pinapadaan mo siya, para siyang filter to separate nucleic acids or proteins okay, by size, electric charge, and other properties. Okay? But in this case, we'll, draw, we'll try to only discuss yung tungkol sa size. Okay? A current is applied that causes charged mole the, the charged molecules to move through the gel. So since the gel would act like a sieve, so para siyang maliliit na beads, no? Okay? That would sieve, okay, um, our molecules inside. So the molecules are now sorted into bands by their sizes. So, Ayan. So, so, kunyari meron kang mixture of DNA molecules in here. You have your gel in here. Okay. You load them in your wells. Okay. You, you turn the power source on. And you see that there are bands that migrate from the well away from it. So, longer molecules would tend to be closer in the well. Kasi longer sila, mas matagal silang mag- pass through the sieve, okay? And of course, shorter molecules would have an easier time passing, passing through the sieve. So that's exactly how um, a gel electrophoresis, gel electrophoresis works. So, since yung mga molecules, hindi naman natin sila makikita, usually they are um, radioactively labeled, we have dyes that would be used in the labeling of these products, and under UV, makikita nyo, they would fluoresce. So since ito yung well, larger molecules would tend to um, be closer to the well, and of course, lighter molecules would tend to migrate faster. Okay? So, I think this is the scope of our first um, module on recombinant DNA technology and some basic techniques used in molecular biology. Thank you.